What's up, fellas? In the first video of the day, we're going to be talking about Russell Westbrook. Um, I think it's possible that this season is something we're going to look back on as the beginning of the end for Russ's career, for Russ as the star that he has been for a lot of different things uh, about Russ and about what he's going to be moving forward. That's what I want to talk about in this video, not only him, but this Wizards team, how it all connects and just kind of the future of Russell Westbrook in the NBA. But really quickly, before we get started, if you enjoy content like this, then consider subscribing. I upload twice a day, every single day on this channel, so it's a great place for consistent NBA content. If you're new here, by the way, what's up? My name is Stalker. You can also leave a like rating on the videos as well, and you can check me out at various socials and a link tree link down in the description below. With those things said, let's talk about Russell Westbrook. So let me just go and ask you a question. I know that, you know, people don't pay necessarily a ton of attention to Washington. Did you know Russell Westbrook was averaging a triple-double this season? Because nobody seems to care. He's averaging a 22-point triple-double. And I haven't seen a single person talk about it. Remember the first time that we thought it was possible for Russ to average a triple-double and everybody was losing their mind. They were keeping track of how many rebounds and assists he needed to get to that average by the end of the season. And then he did it again. We're like, okay, that's impressive, but we're not going to give you the MVP this time. And now he's on pace to do it again, and nobody cares. Um... And I think part of that is, of course, Washington's record. They've had a weird year. I thought this was a team before the year that certainly had a chance to make the postseason. You know, the Russ Bradley Beal backcourt is flawed of a player's Russ can be at times. I just thought the talent level that was there, um, you know, along with Bertans to be able to shoot and space the floor, some of the other guys they had on the roster, I thought that was going to be good enough. I really did. I thought that was going to be good enough to make the postseason. And it's been a weird year for a lot of teams. Uh, you know, Washington is not exempt from that, and they still have a chance to make the playoffs potentially, but currently they have the third worst record in the entire Eastern Conference and are three and a half games out of the play-in game as of right now. Um, and so what that calls into question for me is what the future of Russell Westbrook's NBA career is going to look like. Because as we talked about the other day with Bradley Beal, which is kind of the only thing people are paying attention to about Washington, I think he's going. I think he's going to leave this offseason or by next trade deadline. I think he's going to request a trade, and I think he's going to steer his way to a particular team. And I don't think Washington is going to have all that much of a say in it unless they really want to risk him potentially leaving for absolutely nothing in the summer 22, in which he and Russ, by the way, both have a player option. And with that in consideration, let's just work with that assumption right now that Bradley Beal is gone. Let's just say this offseason. What do you do with Russ if you're Washington? You can look at trade options. You know, you can try and make a move for him. But there's a reason that he was traded for John Wall in a first round pick. John Wall being a guy that hadn't played in two years. Um, it, it's really, really difficult to find trades that make sense for Russell Westbrook, given his salary, given his reputation as a player. And it puts Washington in a very, very difficult situation, not only the Beal trade request, but giving up that pick in exchange for Russ and then not really having anything to do with him. And all this kind of connects to, is this the beginning of the end for Russell Westbrook? Let me just lay out a scenario for you, okay? It's, it's this offseason. Bradley Beal's requested a trade. He ends up getting moved. They get a lot of young, pick, young, young players and picks and assets and stuff in exchange. And it's those guys, and and, and Rui is there, and and Denny Av Ad Advita. I'm, I'm gonna mispronounce his name. All those guys are still there in Washington, and then there's just Russ with all these young guys, who's on basically a one and one deal. He's got a he, he's under contract for next season, then he's got a player option for the following. He's making 44 and then 47 million dollars. It, who's trading for Russell Westbrook at that point, given his age, given some of the injury stuff, um, you know, given his, his reputation as a player? I don't think anybody, how would you even begin to trade for $44 million unless maybe, maybe you could make a case for a team like the Knicks potentially making a move there? And at that point, you start to wonder, like, if Russ is just wasting away on a young, rebuilding Washington team, we, we've seen, we, like, we've seen players have this happen to them you know the biggest example i can think of is blake of course injuries played a huge part in that but blake went from an all nba guy two years ago to being bought out of like a 37 million dollar contract now, i'm not saying russ is going to get bought out but i'm just saying that it's possible that the next two years of his career assuming he opts into a 47 million dollar player option are going to be spent kind of just wasting away in washington on a team that's rebuilding. Again, that's under the assumption that Bradley Beal gets moved, but I was pretty passionate in advocating the other day that I don't think Bradley Beal is going to be on this roster, you know, past the next trade deadline. And the only counter to that would be if for some reason Bradley Beal is the most loyal player in NBA history and Washington is obviously incentivized to continue to run it back and try and do something given the fact that they are giving up uh, the pick 
to Houston in exchange for Russell Westbrook, and they try and make it work, and they continue to try and make moves, but things get pretty ugly as I pull it up here as you look at the, at the Wizards' payroll here moving forward. Again, assuming that you're moving Beal, you're getting rookie contracts, whatever, you're paying a combined $60 million for the next two seasons between Westbrook and Davis Bertans, who has not had as good of a season as you would have hoped when you signed him to that contract, and there's not a ton of upside on this roster either. Rui, Denny, maybe Chandler Hutchinson and, and Daniel Gafford are guys that you can talk yourself into. But apart from that, it is it is not a great situation there in Washington. And, uh, you know, NBA players careers, a lot of a lot of the time it's about perspective and it's about, you know, what a uh, perception, I should say. It's about what other people see you as. And if Russell Westbrook becomes just a guy on a bad Washington team, it's already a bad Washington team, but a really bad rebuilding Washington team. It might be the beginning of the end for Russ, despite the fact that he's averaging a triple double this season, despite the fact that he's had some good moments, despite the fact that this Washington team is only three and a half games out of the playoffs as the recording of this video. It could be the beginning of the end. Now, you guys can let me know down in the comment section below what you think. Um, the only way that he could potentially save this again, keep in mind that Russell Westbrook is 32 as the recording of this video is it's a bad year this year, right? Buell gets traded in the offseason. And Russ basically lets teams know that he's going to opt out of his player option and they can kind of get their ducks in a row to potentially sign him in the summer of 2022. You know what I mean? Maybe in New York, maybe Miami, maybe whoever uh, is in position to go and get him. I just I, I have a hard time thinking about this situation and finding a way in which it ends up in a positive scenario for Russell Westbrook. Like I can't think of a way in which like Beal doesn't get moved and they build a nice team around Beal and Westbrook when Westbrook is now 32 years old. I can't think of a way that you know, Beal gets moved and then Westbrook is just on this young rebuilding team and he's actually good for that team and they can actually be decent. I can't think of a scenario in which that's the case other than them potentially opting out of a ton of money just to get out of there and go somewhere else. And in that scenario, maybe Washington would be really inclined to try and move him, but I don't know who's going to be trying to trade for him. And ultimately, maybe Washington knew this when they made the move. Maybe they knew, hey, you know, we're not super excited about having John Wall either. We'll give up a pick. We'll get Russ with the understanding that, you know, maybe it is going to be a situation where we make a move down the road and we don't end up keeping Russ in the long term. I don't know. Maybe there are some really optimistic Washington fans out there that can kind of explain to me what the positive scenario that's going to come out of all this is. I just quite simply don't see it. Um, and you could make the argument that, you know, with the exception of whatever assets they're going to get in exchange for Beal, this is one of the worst situations in the league right now. You know, uh, there's not a ton of other young talent. Obviously, they're going to get a lot of assets in exchange for Beal, and kind of that trade piece is uh, a huge part of this. And and kind of the one thing that you're pinning your hopes on in terms of a rebuild in Washington. If they didn't have the Bradley Beal trade piece out of this, it would be. I don't really think there would be much of an argument for the worst situation in the league between, you know, Denny and Rui are fine, but you're not incredibly excited about them. Like Thomas Bryant is a young player that I guess you're excited about. Um, it's just it's just not a good look right now. And again, as it relates to Russ, I, I would be willing to bet more on this being the beginning of the end than it not be. He's had an awesome career, and I think it's going to be a polarizing career to look back on. People are going to debate the MVP that he won. People are going to debate the legitimacy of his stats. People are going to debate, oh, well, he never won a title. Yes, they made the finals, but he never won the title, assuming that he doesn't win a title throughout the rest of his career here. Um, and I think you're going to start to see those kinds of, uh, of pieces and pieces of news come out where people are going to start wondering, man, that was a cool career that Russell Westbrook had. I think we're there. I do think that we're at the beginning of the end, unless he finds himself in a situation you know, where he can utilize the talents that he does have on a different team outside of Washington. But all indications are players like Russ that play the style that he does, that rely so much on athleticism, they don't age well, you know, and especially point guards. And I understand that he is not your traditional point guard and he's an incredible athlete and he's got great size. It's not like it's Chris Paul, uh, but Chris Paul is pretty much the only guy ever that's aged really, 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 really well as a point guard. There are ones that have, you know, averaged 14, 15 points a game, but for Russ to continue this level of statistical production beyond this season and then into the next, would be pretty much unprecedented given the way that he plays and things like that and the position that he plays. So with all those things considered, I think it's the beginning of the end. I'm not rooting for it. I don't, uh, you know, I don't necessarily dislike Russ. I'm not a huge Russ guy, but I don't necessarily dislike him. Um, I just, I, I think he, he's kind of staring reality in the face right now. Um, it's not a great situation. He could be looking at his fourth team in as many years if he does somehow get traded this offseason. I don't know. Maybe there's a team waiting in line right now to trade for Russell Westbrook. They've got their options ready to go like, hey, yeah, we really want that guy. Maybe that's the case. 
I'm just I'm just not sure that it is right now. As I said, let me know now in the comment section below if you really think um, this is the beginning of the end for Rest for Russell Westbrook. Don't know why I'm struggling with that so much. But yeah, that's going to be the end of the first video of the day. And I thank you guys very much for watching. Once again, my name is Tucker. If you missed any of my previous videos, then be sure to check out the boxes on screen. As I said, this is the most consistent NBA content on YouTube. So consider subscribing. You can also check out uh, the link tree down in the description below to hang out with me outside of these videos at various socials. With all those things said, I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you all next time.